Uh, I've got Richard Ball, um, Atlas Body Corporation, um, and on behalf of a number of submitters. Welcome. Tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, my name is Richard Ball, and uh, I'm here today as the kaufakahare, or chair, of the Atlas Quarter Body Corporate. Um, and as uh, Mayor Dalzell just said, also speaking on behalf of a number of other submitters uh, from the Atlas Quarter. The issue that I want to raise with you today is actually really, really simple. We pay a significant amount of rates for waste collection and we do not receive a service. And this has continued for some time. Instead, we are required to organise private collection and we pay for that through our body corporate levies. So uh, up on the, the screen is the Atlas Quarter, for those of you who are not familiar with it. Uh, it's in 36 Wells Street. It's a modern apartment block. It's got uh, 113 residential units in, in that one development. And on the ground floor in Well Street, there are three commercial units. It's high density by uh, Christchurch standards. And it epitomises the sort of development that the council's own policies are promoting for central city revitalisation. The issue is that the council's solid waste regime, and what I mean by regime is your, your policies, your bylaws, your service contracts, hasn't kept up with the reality on the ground for what's happening in the central city. So in practical terms, as I outlined, that means we pay between three and $400 per unit per year for waste collection, but the council does not provide that service to us. Instead, we have to pay for it through our body corporate levies. We think that's grossly unfair, and it's certainly inconsistent with other developments and residential units across the other parts of the central city. So what we're asking for is either provide a suitable service for this type of development, or stop charging us. And at this point, our strong preference is to stop charging us because the system that we have arranged privately keeps, is working for us. And if you want to know more about that, I'm happy to, to answer any questions about that. The issue is not new. We raised it in December, uh, and in the hope that it might be able to be addressed in the LTP. Now, I understand the LTP is a big, long process, and it was probably a little bit late to be included in that. Hence, we're here today. Um, but what we were told when I discussed it with a, a staff member in uh, February was that council staff were looking to undertake a comprehensive review and they'll, over the next year, and it will be addressed at some point in the future. A recent conversation I had just in the last couple of weeks with someone else on this issue, when I told them that, they laughed. And the reason they laughed is because they said, that's what we, we were told in 2018. So there's already been a long time by which you can able to address it, and it hasn't been. So by all means, undertake that comprehensive review, and we know there's a whole lot of issues about waste and, and your bylaws. It is complicated, it does take time, but just stop charging us in the meantime. We've already paid over the last three years probably $1,000 per household, when you total that up, 113 units, you know, $113,000. So it's a significant amount of money. And just to be clear on a few things, we strongly support the council's strategic objective of central city revitalisation. We've voted with our feet. We live there. We're advocates for it. But we've been penalised for it. And so that's what we're wanting to address. We also strongly support your objectives of waste minimisation. We provide all the same waste streams that the council provides, as well as some bins for corrugated cardboard recycling, because they take up a whole lot of space. And we do that all at our own cost. And it's not about not wanting to pay rates. We're very happy to pay our fair share of rates. And when I look at your LTP, personally, I think there's lots of great stuff in there. I'd love to see something like the Red Zone be a Hagley Park of our generation that we can pass on to the future, or 
I'd also like to see more money spent on uh, things like Banks Peninsula um, pest control, for example. So there's lots of great things that, that I support, and, and I know other residents support. So it's not just about that, but the current situation is grossly unfair and inconsistent across the CBD. So I'll just go through some slides, and if I can, hopefully this will work. So first of all, um, to not charge us is very easy, and some in the central city already have it. That quote is from this little brochure here, which I received with my rates last year, a guide to my rates. And as you'll see, it's talking about the waste minimisation rate. And it says, central city properties do not pay this since they have a separate waste regime. Well, guess what? We are central city. We have a separate waste regime. We do pay it, but we receive nothing. And that our line highlighted is from my, waste, uh, from my rates bill. It's only the waste minimisation part of highlighted there. The red bins, I understand, are paid for through general rates. So it's, it's not the full picture. It's in terms of consistency across the central city, that's looking off my balcony to the other side of Wells Street. On the other side, at number 25 Wells Street, is a low density development. There are, um, I think, six or seven residential units above, a commercial, uh, above some shops, and they utilise the council's own uh, waste stream. I have no idea where they pay for it, but they, they do utilise the council's service. If we were to apply that to our development, <laughs> yeah. and in fact, that's only half of the bins. So our street frontage is, is roughly twice the length, but we would need to have 339 separate bins uh, and put out 226 of them each week. And they'll be in front of commercial units, not against all like that. So what we have instead is we have 12 bins. And eight of those provide the same waste streams as the council uh, bins, and four of them are for corrugated cardboard. And it's small and it's compact because it's all shared. And it's, hey, it covers all the same waste streams and it's paid for privately by our, our body corporate. So just in summary, the current charging we see is unfair, it's un inconsistent across the central city, um, it works against your strategic objectives of central city revitalisation because we've been penalised for it, and there's a clear mechanism to stop charging. And if you want to um, undertake a comprehensive review, go ahead, but please stop charging us in the meantime. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. I mean, it's a very um, graphic. I, I love the fact that you overlaid the number of bins over it. I'm, I'm a central city dweller as well. I live in a very small um, development, apartment building. Um, over the road is the West Fitzroy. They also have the private service that you've described. So um, thank you. And you've made it very clear. It's one or the other. Yanni. Um, just wanted to check. Has someone told you that you can't have the service, or can you have the service if you choose to have it? What people have told us is it requires council policy decision. To me, the, the, the key policy decision is, is probably your, your LTP in terms of the funding side of it. There, there are operational policies that the council has. Oh, sorry, place. just let me be clear. Sure. You're currently paying for a service. Yep. If you, as a resident, rang up the council and said, I want my three wheelie bins because I'm paying for the service, are you told that you can't have it? Or could you have the three bins? We, we could have the three bins, but they're right. completely impractical yep. for our development. I, I, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure because we, we haven't asked for the three bins because it just doesn't work for, for the fact that we've got 340, we would need 340 bins. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, this has been going on since 2015. So yep. it's great that you've made this submission. And there's been a lot of work done. I don't know if it's public that we can share with you over potential options. So just, I guess, to reassure you that there is a lot of work that's been done already um, that came in December last year. So Yeah, I don't know that reassurance is, um, is what we're looking for. We're looking for a solution. 
No, um, sorry, there was a comment made that we're doing a comprehensive review and that people laugh because they were told that a year. It's a review year. of a different matter. It's not in relation to a very simple question, which is pay for or provide. Yeah, I can share yeah. the report if you want. Uh, thanks so much. Um, when it comes to the increasing number of high-density developments across the um, not just the central city, but mostly the central city and other places as well. Do you think it makes sense for council to have some sort of standardised collection system for those rather than everyone doing their own individually over time, rather than each development doing maybe a slightly different thing over time? Yeah, look, I can understand that the council might want to ensure that if people are doing their own thing, it's got to provide for the same waste streams yeah. Yeah. as part of your waste minimisation objectives, and, and we can understand that and support that. One of the things that we, the, the reason that we prefer uh, to stop paying uh, rates and organise it ourselves is actually the cost that we pay is probably about half of what we pay in rates because of the fact that it's consolidated down. You know, we're not collecting 226 each time. The other thing is that it allows us, because we've got a direct relationship with the provider, if we want to change things around. So, for example, Last year we found that our cardboard recycling bins were overflowing, so we just said, oh, can we have another one? And we're happy to pay with that. When we first moved in, there was no green bin. So we said, actually, we want that. So we asked for it. So it provides for that sort of you know, direct relationship, which is probably fairly cumbersome to provide through the council as, a, as the organising party. But if, if you're able to provide it, we, we absolutely. Thanks. So the key for you is that relationship where you can negotiate what is required within your development? Correct. Right. James? Kia ora, Richard. Uh, great presentation. And uh, I've got to say, what you're doing with your waste as a body corp is, is admirable. Um, are you happy to, to tell us what that's costing you? Yeah, so it's about $20,000 a year. Spread amongst? Uh, uh, spread among... Uh, 113 residential households. So, as I said, that's probably about half of what we're paying in rates. Right, OK. Um, and the other thing is that you've sold that... You've made your point really, really well. Uh, I think you, you, you're resonating with all of us um, to the extent that I'm almost keen to, uh, to live at Atlas. Yeah. Except, <laughs> except, except that I know that I'd be living near John Hutchison. Hi, John. <laughs> The, the world's not perfect. But. <laughs> uh, look, if, if anyone wants to come and have a look around Atlas, I'm very happy to, to, to show you around because I think it does epitomise the sort of development that the Council's advocating for. Thank you very much for your presentation and, and thank you for the um, other residents that have entrusted yes. you with the time to make the presentation. I actually think it was a much better presentation for the additional time and the um, methodology that you um, used, and especially the graphics. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.